Good morning. It's good to greet you as we come and worship on this Sunday before Epiphany. This is Epiphany Eve. So thank you for coming to the Epiphany Eve service. As we worship today, there are some announcements I would bring to your attention. Uh, as, we, as we do worship, we're going to be today in the Great Thanksgiving using a song. And so Jacob's going to play it through for us. You may already be familiar with it, but the words will be up on the screen when it comes to the time of Great Thanksgiving. But I've asked him if he would sing through it now to help us. Siegel has an announcement to make about breakfast next week. Next week at 9 o'clock, we will meet in the fellowship hall for breakfast. Um, if you're planning to come and are bringing a dish, you can sign up on this little card that's in the pew and put it in the um, offering plate. If you have already signed up on one of the sheets, in Java Stop or the Welcome Center, that's good. But we do need to know how many people are coming so we can um, prepare for you. So this is a, using this card is the easiest way to sign up if you have not already done so. We will look forward to seeing you then. Thank you. Thanks, Mary. Following worship today, uh, there will be a time for those who would like to stay and help for a few minutes. We'll be uh, taking down the various uh, Christmas decorations that are here in the sanctuary. So if you'd like to stay and help, hopefully it'll be about 15 minutes or so of your time. If you're interested in giving flowers for this, com or for this year, there is a flower chart in the office uh, hallway where you may do so. If you're a guest with us today, we are so glad you're here, and we invite you to fill out one of the guest information cards, and you may place it in the pew uh, in the offering plate today. It is good to be in the house of the Lord. Let us worship the God of our salvation.
Good morning. Would you please stand and join with me the call to praise and prayer, then followed by hymn 254, We Three Kings. For it is God who said, let light shine out of darkness, who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. You may be seated. As we come to God in time of prayer uh, today, would ask for your prayers as we remember Sue Gay and Pat Staten, members of our church who died last Sunday. Sue's service was of remembrance and Thanksgiving was yesterday. And Pat's will be this coming Saturday at 11 o'clock. So I know that their families would appreciate very much your prayers for them. Also, uh, Roger Dowdy's wife, Janie. Roger was the director of music here at Fort Hill uh, at a previous time. 
His wife, Janie, died last Saturday following uh, a few years of illness. And so we want to remember Roger and his family as well in this time. Also, I would ask for your prayers uh, today as we begin a new year uh, for our United Methodist Church. You may have seen an article or in the newspaper this week or on the news about a proposal that will be considered uh, at General Conference, which is a quadrennial meeting held uh, May 5 through 15 in Minneapolis, Minnesota. And at this upcoming General Conference, there are delegates, uh, over 800, who are elected by their annual conferences. Uh, we are part of the Virginia Annual Conference, both equal number of laity and clergy who will go and who will uh, meet and make decisions related to the future of our denomination. Uh, as they meet, I would ask for your prayers for God's wisdom for them. What was presented in the newspaper was not a plan, a plan that has uh, yet been endorsed. It is a plan that is being represented uh, by a smaller group of people. So uh, I wanted to be sure that it was, there appeared to be within the news like a decision already had been made. That's not the case. So I would ask for your prayers. As we pray, I'll be offering various petitions to God following a time of silence uh, prayer. I will say, in your mercy and together, we shall pray, Lord, hear our prayer. May we pray. O oh God, we give thanks to you for this day as we worship in the beginning of a new year and of a new decade. We thank you that your faithfulness is with us from the beginning and into the future. We thank you for a Savior who is the same yesterday, today, and forever. In the name of Jesus, we offer these prayers this day. Prayers for our world, for conflict, for the threat of war. We pray, O oh God, for the leaders of our nations, for your wisdom and your guidance. In your mercy, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray this day for your church universal, for its ministry in the world as the body of Christ. We pray especially for our own United Methodist Church and ask God that in decisions that will be made in this year, that your spirit will guide and give direction. In your mercy, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray, O oh God, this day for Fort Hill United Methodist Church, for our ministry together, with thanksgiving for this body, this congregation that seeks to serve you and that supports one another in the love of Christ. We ask for your blessings in this upcoming year. In your mercy, Lord, hear our prayer. We offer our prayers for those of our congregation who are facing challenging times. We give thanks to you for the lives of the saints, especially give thanks this day for the life of Sue Gay and Pat Staten. We thank you for the ways that they bless this church and for the ways they witness to the faith of Christ. We pray for Roger Dowdy and for his family this day and the, and the death of Janie. Grant to them your strength and your comfort. In your mercy, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray, O oh God, that as we prepare for the journey of Epiphany, that you would grant that the light, the star that guided the wise men, will also guide us so that as we travel the journey ahead that we might know that our journey of faith will lead us to Jesus Christ our Lord in whose name we have prayed this day. Amen. verses 1 through 6. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. 
for darkness shall cover the earth and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will arise upon you and his glory will appear over you. Nations come to your light and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look around. They all gather together, they come to you. Your sons shall come from far away and your daughters shall be carried on their nurses' arms. Then you shall see and be radiant. Your heart shall thrill and rejoice because the abundance of the sea shall be brought to you. The wealth of the nation shall come to you. A multitude of camels shall come cover you. The young camels of Midian and Ephah, all those from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and frankincense and shall proclaim the praise of the Lord. Now, if you will join me in your bulletin with this morning's prayer. Everlasting God, the radiance of faithful souls, you brought the nations to your light and kings to the brightness of your rising. Fill the world with your glory and show yourself to all the nations through him who is true life and the bright morning star. Even Jesus Christ, Son and Lord. Amen. Our second scripture this morning comes from Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is this child who has been born of the Jews? For we observed his star as we were rising, and we have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him. And calling people together, all the chief priests and the scribes of the people, he inquired of them, where is the Messiah was to be born? They told him, in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet. And you in Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for from you all shall come a ruler who is to be a shepherd, my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned that them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for this child, and also you have found him. Bring, him, bring me words that I may also go and pay homage. When they heard the king, they set out, and when they were there ahead of them, went to the star that they had been seen by all rising until it stopped over the place where the child was. And when they saw that star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening the treasure chest, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream of not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. The word of God for the people of God. May we pray. Bless, O oh God, the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts together, that they may be acceptable in your sight through Christ our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Well, journeys of life are a combination, a mixture of our expectations for life and our experiences of life. Journeys of life are a mixture of our expectations for life and our experiences of life. It is in the course of this mixture, these travels together, that we will find that either the journey will continue in the direction which we are currently traveling, will cease, or will go in another direction. In 1850, there's a story told about a young man who came from Bavaria to the gold rush. It was his hope, his expectation as he went, that uh, he would be able to take uh, canvas and out of that canvas create tents that he could sell to the miners so that in turn he could receive money so that in turn he could invest in gold mining himself. Well, that was his expectation. When he got to the Sierra Mountains, he ran into some gold miners and told them of his idea of, of canvas for tents. And one of the gold miners says, that will not work. That just will not work. 
nobody will buy it. Well, as he received this news, he thought to himself and he prayed, Lord, what am I going to do? What I came, I cannot do. And so as he was praying to himself, he thought these things. And then the miner told him, what we really need are pants. We need pants that can bear up to the rigors of gold mining. The pants we have currently just tear so easily. We need sturdy pants in order for that to happen. As the young man received that news, he thought to himself, I can do something with the canvas. His name was Levi Strauss. <laughs> and he took the canvas, had jeans made, had a coppersmith to work on them with the copper and the buttons, and he called them Levi's. That was in 1850. Since that time, over 900 million Levi's have been sold. Journeys in life are a mixture of our expectations for life and our experiences of life. And it is when those experiences and, and those uh, expectations intersect that the journey of life will either continue forward in the direction in which we wish to be headed will cease or will change. The Magi were on a journey of expectations as they followed the star to go to Bethlehem. We know their expectations as they said, where is the child who was born king of the Jews? For we have come to pay him homage. We know that they expected to find an earthly king as they brought gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. As they came to Bethlehem, their experience or their expectation met experience in the person of Herod. Now Herod, also known as Herod the Great, was the king of Judea. He was not of pure Jewish lineage, and he came to power through the Roman government. He was no respecter of the law of Israel or the religious leaders. In fact, one of the signs of Herod's disrespect was that in the temple in Jerusalem, the primary place of worship for the people of Israel, Herod had placed up on the top of the temple over the gates where he came in a golden eagle, a symbol of the Roman Empire. Herod was not liked very well. He was suspicious of everyone. Whenever he sensed there was a threat, he would hire mercenary soldiers to go in and take out the necessary people. So when he told the kings, the magi, to come back and let him know when they had found the child, he meant it not to pay homage, but to get rid of Jesus. The Magi, after meeting with Herod, went on to the Christ child to present their gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Their expectations intersecting with their experience. As you think about your own life, your expectations, your experiences on this Epiphany Eve, where do you sense God calling you how are the experiences of your life interceding or inter, uh, interacting with your expectations? I mentioned earlier in, uh, in a time of prayer about what might be happening or what will happen this year for in May at a general conference. There are lots of expectations or potential expectations for that. There will be many experiences we don't know yet what may happen. I've been a delegate to General Conference before myself a few times, uh, and I will tell you that a part of what I experienced there was that it was very difficult for 800 people from around the world 
to reach a common decision together. On May 5th of last year, when Beverly and I came and met with the Staff Parish Relations Committee uh, here at Fort Hill for a Meet Your Pastor meeting, uh, we, the, and within the context of that meeting, we talked some about what might be coming up for the United Methodist Church. And what I shared at that meeting was that my hope is in the local congregations like Fort Hill. That because I know here, we live in relationship with each other. We know that our expectations are to serve God with all that we are and with all that we have. And our experience is, is that God is with us in all that's ahead. Tomorrow is Epiphany Day. It is the day we remember the journey of the Magi, of their expectations and their experiences. And it's the day that we remember also the expectations that God has for us in this new year. May God grant that our expectations and our experiences will always lead us to Jesus. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Spirit. Amen.
Bless, O God, our gifts, our tithes, our offerings, that the gift of our lives will share the gift of your life in Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who intend to live in love and charity with their neighbors, following from henceforth the commandments of God. Draw near with faith, take this sacrament to your strength and to your comfort this day. For Christ is the host of this table, and Christ invites all to come. I invite us to join together in our confession and our pardon. Almighty God, light of the world, we confess the reluctance to live by the light of your love in our lives. We close our eyes to the needs of others and our feet wander from your path. Grant that we might open our eyes and walk in the path of the one who is the light of the world, even Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Here the new, good news, Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. This proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is a right and good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. In the beginning, you said, let there be light, and there was light. In the light of your love, the Magi followed the star as it guided them to Jesus. O oh God, as we prepare ourselves for Epiphany, we ask that the light of your love and the light of your star that guided the Magi may also guide us so that we might in turn be the light of the world through Jesus. We thank you for the gift of your love that is eternal and that greets us this morning. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, 
death, and resurrection. You gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, he gave it to his disciples, and he said, take, eat, this is my body given for you. Eat this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks, and said, drink from this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant shed for you and many for the forgiveness of sins. Drink this in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body and blood of Christ shared. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Holy Spirit, and your holy, through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And I invite us to pray the prayer which Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. The body of Christ given for us. And the blood of Christ shed for us. The method by which we shall receive communion today is intinction, meaning that as you are directed by the ushers, you'll come forward, receive a piece of the bread, dipping in the juice and receiving in that manner. We are on a journey together. We are not alone. As we begin this new year and this new decade, let us do so in the confidence that Jesus Christ, who is the same yesterday, today, and forever, travels the journey with us. And he invites us all to come and to share in his grace. Amen. I invite those who are going to serve to come forward.
I invite you to join in the prayer of thanksgiving or the prayer after receiving. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
journeys of life, a mixture of expectations and experiences. Whatever the journey takes us ahead, this know that the Christ whom the, the whom, try that again, the Christ whom the Magi travel to see travels the journey with us. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Spirit. Amen. Thank you.